Hi, in this video you're going to see examples of using arrays in the C-sharp programming language. So here's the agenda. We're going to look at for loops and for each loops and how we can go through arrays. We're going to build arrays, we're going to make two-dimensional arrays, we're going to talk about jagged arrays, and also compare arrays with this thing called array lists. And so that's all ahead right here. My name is Shad Sluter and I'm a professor of computer science and software engineering at Grand Canyon University. And so the videos you see on this channel are usually things that I use in class. And right now you're looking at one of the beginner level programmers. And so if you're interested in becoming a software engineer, subscribe to the channel and we'll help you through and maybe even get a career. So let's get to the arrays part now. So I have up in front of us a, an example of a program in C Sharp with Visual Studio. You can see that I have an example of an array. This is an array of strings. So let's take a look at what states is all about. So states is the name of this array, and an array is really a variable that has multiple pieces. It's a list, and you can see that this is a list of states. Now since each state is a word, it's a quotation mark around it, that means it's a string. And so I could have created an array of integers or floats or decimals just as easily, but I'm choosing to make an array of strings. Then the next step down is to print them. So I'm going to use an example of a for loop. So for is going to go from zero to the length of states. And so you can see that this is a defined variable of the array. So instead of putting in here the number six, as you can see I have six states, I could put in six, but then I would have a problem later if I needed to print uh, a seventh state. So I would have to remember to change six to seven. So it's better just to use states.length. Let's see what happens when I run this. All right, so you can see the program executed and we now have a list from zero to five and Alaska to Hawaii. So this is printing what I expected. What do we print down here in the right line statement though? So first of all you can see I'm using the counter variable i and then also inside of the brackets for state is the number i. So that is called the index of the array. So states index 0 is Alaska. State index 1 is Arizona. And so that's how you access the elements of an array. I'm going to show you another way to print the array. So I'm going to delete these lines that say the for loop and paste in another piece of code. So this one here is called a for each loop. So a for each says we're going to declare some kind of variable that is going to stand in for a counter. So there's no longer an i counting up the number of states. It just says for each state in states. So I could use state here, I could use just the letter s if I want. Some kind of a variable that stands for one of the states. We have to declare it as a string because, well, that's what the states are. Let's run it and see if this works like we expect. And so here it goes. We get exactly what we expect. So we print the states and we don't have anything else. We just have the letter s as the variable. So if you want to use a for loop or a for each loop, you can and loop through each item in the array. So it depends on what kind of a circumstance you need. If you need to know what number it is, what order it's in, then use a for loop with an i or some variable that counts. If you're not interested in what the order is or the number of the state is, then just use for each because it looks simpler. Let's move on to another example here. I'm going to show you what two-dimensional arrays are. So I'm deleting and pasting in new code. So what is a two-dimensional array? Well, it's like a board. Think of a checkerboard or a chessboard, and you have a grid. So any kind of a coordinate system is two-dimensional. So when you declare something as two-dimensional, such as this variable here called grid, you put in a square bracket with a comma. So that's telling you that we have an x and y coordinate, really. Now in this, I'm going to create a grid of 6 by 7. So that's going to have 42 different values. And it's all integers. So once again, you can, you can use strings or integers or floats. I'm using integer because that's what I chose for this example. So we're going to use a nested for loop. So if you want to check out more examples about for loops, I've got another video that specifically talks about these. But a nested for loop is one loop inside of another. And so the first loop counter is the variable i, the second is j, and this one's going to go from 6 all the way, and this one's going to up to 7. 
And then inside here, we're going to make an, a new value. So at each grid point, we're going to add the two values together. So at point zero, zero, well, the value should be zero plus zero. We're going to print these and uh, I've got some formatting down here. Let's see what it looks like and then we'll be able to understand. All right, so here we go. We've got ourselves the list. You can see that it is printed just the tail end here. But if we scroll up to the top, we can begin with zero, zero. And so the grid zero, zero is a two dimensional array. First point, upper left corner of the grid. This is going to have value zero. And you can see I'm just summing up together the X and Y coordinates. And so each point on the grid contains a new number. Now I'm going to change this a little bit. So I'm going to comment out this right line and put in a new one. So I'm going to put in CW and I'm going to just put in the value of grid at I comma J. So there's no coordinates now, just the value. And let's run that and see what that looks like. Okay, so the application ran again. And this time it's just printing the value of each item at the grid. So there's no uh, explanation of what's going on. What I want to do now is print this actually in a grid format. So I'm going to change the code again. So what I'm going to do now is after the for loop J, the inner for loop, I'm just going to put CW and tab tab, which will do a right line. Let's see what that does. If I put them all together as this statement called right, and then I'm going to put a comma to follow it just so that they separate a little bit better. Okay, let's see what that looks like. All right, so now we've got the example on the screen that I was going for. So when I talk about a two dimensional array, I usually envision this as a board, a grid. So you can see rows and columns. And so instead of just printing the entire thing off in one long list, I chose to put it in a 2D array. So let's take a look at the uh, code here compared to what's going on. So when does this start a new line? Well, it starts a new line at the end of the first uh, or the inner loop. So after J goes from zero to seven, then we start a new loop again. So that's why console write line only occurs about what six times or five times in this program. So that's what you think of when you see a 2D array. All right, let's add another item to print this in a different way. So I'm going to add some more text after the last bracket here, pasting it in. So now I'm going to try to print this again, but using a for each loop. So what does this do? So this says print for each I in the grid and go ahead and print it out. Let's see what that does. So we're going to have two ways to print. One is a grid, the other will be a list. And so there you can see it printed now. So each time that I go through the grid, it's very easy to see the X and Y coordinate structure. However, in this one, I just went through every item in the grid and it doesn't pay any attention to where its rows and columns are, but we still get the same values. All right, let's return to a previous example that we were working with on the states. And so you might remember this code just from a minute ago. We're going to have the states and a loop to print them. Now I'm going to eliminate the for loop part and just work on the states variable. So now I'm going to paste in a whole bunch more arrays. And this is going to lead us to what's called jagged arrays. So right now I have a list of states and then you can see that I have something that's kind of related, like it says Alaska cities and I have three cities in Alaska, Arizona cities, and you can see that it looks like I have about six. And so the point here is that each of these arrays is a different length. Uh, obviously there's more than just three cities in these states, but I'm just trying to vary this. So now if I wanted to somehow keep a list of all of the items and associate them with the proper state, how would I do that? The key here is what's called a jagged array. So I'm going to type in string with a square bracket followed by another square bracket. And so what that means is this is an array of arrays or sometimes called a jagged array because it doesn't come out in a nice square. So I'm going to name this thing as states and their capitals. And I'm going to define it as a new set of array of arrays. So what I need to do though is tell it how many items are in the main list. So how many states are there? Well, I could just put in here states dot length and that should give me the value that I'm looking for. Now the second value there I can leave empty because that's different for each item. 
Now let me co copy and paste some more code so you don't have to sit and watch me type. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through each item in the states and their capitals array and say for the first state I'm going to assign it the array called Alaska Cities. And so for Alaska you will see Alaska Cities and you can see the order is the same here. So Arizona is also the second item in the list, California is the third and so on. So we're going to have an array of arrays. Okay, now I'm gonna print some more complex code here. and I'll put it on the screen just so we can see it. So how am I gonna print these? So I'm going to go through a nested for loop again. So the first loop says I'm going to go for each item in the states list, so from zero to six. Then the next one says I'm going to go from the length of each list in the state. So how many cities are in there? So this says, Go find, for example, the state zero and get the length of it, and then print the uh, item called IJ. Wow, so that's kind of complex, but let's see what it does. Wow, there's the code, it ran. And so you can see that for each state, there's a different number of cities being printed. So I'm using a jagged array because the states are inconsistent in how many cities they have. So I would say this one here is confusing, it's complex, and that's why I printed out this whole example for you. So you might have arrays of arrays in other cases that you're making, but um, it's much easier to have just a fixed 2D array where you have a grid pattern. Uh, that's a far more simple kind of problems to solve. But sometimes you need these. All right, so let me paste in some more examples here. So this is an array, as you can see, an array of strings. But now I'm going to introduce some other things called uh, a list, an array list, an assorted list, and there's more. So if you want to see what the difference between an array and array list, I'll create a video that will explain that. If you want to create applications and games using C Sharp, then take my course here called Beginning C Sharp, and you'll be well on your way to becoming a professional programmer. Thanks for watching.